U.S. President Joe Biden raised his concerns with the judicial overhaul being advanced by Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's government during a candid and constructive phone call with the premier on Sunday. According to administration officials, Biden reiterated his call for the Israeli government to secure as broad a consensus as possible and also expressed support for President Isaac Herzog's efforts towards a compromise between the coalition and the opposition. The president underscored his belief that democratic values have always been and must remain a hallmark of the U.S.-Israel relationship, according to a White House readout. Netanyahu responded to Biden that Israel was and will remain a strong and vibrant democracy. No official invitation to the White House was extended to Netanyahu, as reports claim that the Biden administration is waiting to see how the Muslim holy month of Ramadan unfolds. The Ramadan period, which begins in the coming days, has historically added another layer of tension between Israelis and Palestinians. And joining me now in studio is Mark Schulman, editor-in-chief of History Central and columnist of Newsweek. Thank you very much for joining me as always, Mark. I want to ask you, what are your thoughts on this phone call between Biden and Israel? Well, it's kind of interesting. You look at the Israeli sort of readout. It wasn't really quite a readout like the White House does. And you look at the right. White House readout. The White House readout talks about the, the uh, summit in Sharm el-Sheikh uh, to discuss the situation in the West Bank. It talks about the need to maintain calm in the West Bank. It then goes on to talk about judicial reform. And Biden offered his services to help mediate. I mean, just think about this. The president of the United States is not going to mediate between Israel and Egypt. He's going to mediate between the sides inside of Israel. And so we've gone a long way. And then at the very end, he said, Israel, you know, the United States will stand by Israel when it comes to Iran. Of course, the Israelis turned it on its head and talked about how the meeting was discussing Iran and how Netanyahu spoke how Israel will always remain a democracy. Uh, clearly, Biden is not buying it any more than anyone else in, in terms of what democracy means. Um, look, Biden has always been very close to Israel. Um, and probably the, the last Democratic president who has these really, really strong... Uh, it's, it's a misconception, right, that, that, that the Biden administration is, say, less close to Israel than Trump was. But actually, you're right. He no, is very He close. is very, very close. Right. I mean, Trump, Trump I had never visited Israel before he became president, I don't believe. Right. And Biden has been here, I don't know how many times, 40, some ridiculous number of times. He has a strong uh, he has love for Israel, quite honestly. Um, and the reality is he cares. But, you know, if he was in Israel, he'd probably be a member of the Labor Party or something like that. He certainly right. wouldn't be a member of the league could. He's a Democrat, after yeah. all. And so he identifies with that side of the political spectrum. Um, so I want to ask you, Mark, is a phone call from the American president effective in persuading Netanyahu of the need for compromise on this judicial reform? Look, he's gotten a phone call from everybody. Right. Um, you know, on every single level, he's gotten phone calls, he's gotten requests, he's across the board, economically, everything across the board. Uh, I don't know. You know, we're always going to ask the question, you know, we have a simple answer, it's his trial, but what is pushing him to this extent is something that we don't really understand because by all logic, he would have said, taken the Herzog plan or at least the Herzog plan as a basis of negotiations, hold everything off, and then we can work something out because it's yeah. tearing the country apart in ways that we've never seen before. So will it be one more part? Yes, it certainly is. Biden making his, his position very clear. Look. If we think Iran is an existential threat right now, which certainly Netanyahu has been claiming for all this period of time, then everything else should be put by the side and said, okay, we'll deal with all these things later. Right now, we're going to do everything to make the Americans happy, to, to put the country together and deal with Iran. So that brings, that to, brings up the question, if it's so important, stop everything. If it's not that important. Before we leave you, I want to ask you, do you believe U.S.-Israel relations are damaged? Okay, they're not damaged in the sense that you know, short term, they're, they're hurt. They're not long term damage, depending on what happens. I think if the judicial reform goes through in its present format, even with this small change in the judge selection, I think long term it will be damaged because Israel will not be seen to be the same democracy that it was. I mean, that, you know, the, the Israel American relationship is based on two to three things. One is strategic relationship, and that has nothing to do with any of this. It's the shared values. If we don't have shared values, it's a question where, where that stands. And it's the American-Jewish um, relationship with Israel, which is being damaged as well. Right. So we'll see. I'm not optimistic, but I can always hope, right?